In this video, I'll be covering chapter one of Campbell Biology. So first, what is biology? Biology is the scientific study of life, and it begs questions such as, how does a single cell develop into a mature animal or plant? How do living things interact in a biological community? And, or stuff like, how does the human mind work? Applications of biology include agricultural applications, such as coming up with fertilizers, uh, understanding what fertilizers are in the first place, or it could be stuff like environmental applications. So for global warming, bio part of biology is understanding what global warming is, or it could be generating solutions for global warming. Uh, okay, first concept is that bio biologists explore life from the microscopic to the global scale. And so the whole theme of chapter one is basically that life's basic characteristic is a high degree of order. This means that if you see the diagram on the right, it shows you how a cell clumps together to create tissues and a tissue clumps together to create an organ and so on. And so it is basically saying that uh, a lot of organisms and life and how complex and how many functions an organism carries out, um, etc., comes from its hierarchy. And next, organisms are diverse. So for example, an organism could be unicellular or multicellular, which means unicellular basically means that the organism is just made up of one cell. So this could be something like um, some types of bacteria. Multicellular could be something like humans, where we are made of like millions and millions of cells. Organisms interact continuously with their environment. And so, for example, this could be like eating from the environment. Like we pick plants, maybe like an apple from the environment and we eat it, and that's affecting the environment technically. Um, or making habitats, that could be also impacting the environment. And next, cells are an organism's basic unit of structure and function. Hence, cells are important in the study of life. Um, this is just a diagram, but like a more close-up view of it. So if you want to pause and take a look at that, feel free to. Next, biological systems are much more than the sum of their parts. Lives are made up of different levels and each level is significant. This is basically the, con the same concept that I talked about before. And so each of these levels are significant because one level can impact the next level and so forth. So for example, if one cell like fails to split correctly, like their mitosis doesn't go correctly and it creates like a cancerous cell, like a daughter cell, the cell reproduces itself and now there's a cancerous tissue and that cancerous tissue could spread into different or like cover the whole organ and that organ could become dysfunctional, which could lead the person to die. And so basically going off of that concept, reductionism is the concept of reducing complex systems to simple components to make things like easier to look at. Like when you open a biology textbook, you're not gonna learn straight with like a digestive system. You'll start with things like, oh, what are lives made of? They're made of cells. You can look at like, you have to learn what a cell is to understand how the cells properties come to impact the higher like levels of life, such as like organs. Next, biologists explore life across its great diversity of species. Living things show great diversity and unity. So there's three main domains of life. There is the bacteria, archaea, and eukarya domains. And domains are like, they split into kingdoms. And so for example, um, a kingdom of eukarya is like the plant kingdom. The plant kingdom is part of the eukarya domain. And so domains are split basically off of its core differences, which we usually tend to compare cells. And so prokaryotes are basically, prokaryotes and eukaryotes are the two cell types, and they have 
like a couple differences, but they also have similarities because what you'll later find out is that eukaryotes or prokaryotes used to be like the ancestor of eukaryotes. So eukaryotes were developed um, after prokaryotes came to be. And so some of their like differences, for example, uh, prokaryotes, they tend to have they tend to not have a nuclear envelope. If you don't know what a nuclear envelope is, it'll be later mentioned in like chapter five or four, I think, like in the cell organelle explanation chapter, whatever. If you don't know, it's fine. But um, if you do know what that is, then it makes it easier because prokaryotes, like one of the key differences is that prokaryotes have don't have a nuclear envelope while the eukaryotes do have a nuclear envelope so that could be like a difference but they also have similarities such as they all share dna that's just one of the core similarities between life um cell structures could be similar and different and adaptations like of the organism in different environments can be similar and different depending on the environment's state for example or like condition um, next is evolution accounts for life's unity and diversity. And so this part is basically about Charles Darwin. And Charles Darwin was basically this um, evolutionist like scientist guy who brought evolution into focus in 1859. And he had two di- like two important concepts that he sort of brought up to the surface. The first one is that, Modern species came from succession of ancestors through descent with modifications. So you can think of that like evolution image where like the monkey becomes a human. It's like what uh, like our, the monkeys used to be our ancestors, but we gradually um, the monkeys had descendants and the descendants had small modifications here and there. And that continued for centuries, and now there's humans. The second point is that descent with modification um, has happens with like through natural selection. So natural selection is basically, in summary, survival is talking about survival of the fittest. And it says that individuals from the same species have. It assumes that in, it has. It needs individuals from same species to have varying traits. And there is competition between those individuals, whether that's because of um, prob- most likely like resources um, or just any kind of problem that creates a struggle for existence. Um, there's like pressure coming from the environment. And hence, uh, this kind of pressure creates an environment where individuals with favorable traits to survive in the environment get to survive the best next is biologists use various forms of inquiry to explore life so there's two types of data that you can analyze uh, in like a scientific method there is quantitative data which by the name implies is numerical stuff or stuff like statistics or like the statement there's 66 rats qualitative data is um descriptive data so it could be something like these rats are mostly red hypothesis is something you you might be already familiar with from maybe middle school or elementary school uh the definition of hypothesis is the tentative answer to a well-framed question and most like all sciences are hypothesis based and this means that or like most experiments, sorry, I meant most experiments, like experiments are hypothesis based. And what this means is that when someone like a scientist carries out an experiment, they have like a, or like an idea of what could happen at the end of the experiment. Like they predict what, um, after they set up like an experiment, hypothesis is basically like a prediction to what the outcome could be and a hypothesis based science hence must be deductive which means that um the like logic flow goes from general to specific so you already have a general idea of how some like biological concepts work and based on that general knowledge you 
frame that knowledge into like a more specific context, like an experiment. Um, and next, the hypothesis-based science must be testable because how else are you going to answer like your question? And it also must be falsifiable so that you know for cle like clearly if the outcome you get uh, like rejects your hypothesis or confirms your hypothesis. Next is finally, final concepts is about how a set of themes connects the concepts of biology. And this is this con this concept is basically talking about how biology requires lots of other sciences. Could be stuff like chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Um, well, chemistry and mathematics they already go hand in hand pretty much, but chemistry you'll actually go more deeper into uh, in chapter two of the textbook, and so that's it. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped review. I mean, chapter one isn't that important, but yeah, hopefully this helped.